Captain DeBridge. Spock here. Any signs of life? Negative. Have you tried all hailing frequencies? Affirmative. No answer from the cube. Have the department heads meet me on the bridge. Already standing by. Life sciences. Same report. So are we going to just let it hold us here? We've got phaser weapons. I vote we blast it. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Bailey. When this becomes a democracy. You realize that the aim will, of course, be very crude. I don't care if you hit the broadside of a barn. Just hurry, please. Captain, why should I aim at such a structure? Never mind, Spock. Just get on with the job. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another episode. I guess the first of the season, year, or the last episode of last year, however we're going to frame this. We'll, we'll call it a bridge episode. How's that? Yes, bridge episode of Future Imperfect. Something that we wanted to maybe do while we were on hiatus, but things hadn't really completed yet. <laughs> and that is, we are going to be talking about 2022 and all of the, the Star Trek shows that happened within that year, as there were a few that we wanted to do reviews of that didn't quite line up with all of us getting together to talk about individually. And we said, damn it, we're going to get together, at least those of us that were able to finish everything and uh, give it a review before all of the new seasons start for the year. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's obviously I'm Alex, the producer, joined with Aaron Pollier, and we are going to be discussing uh, a brief summary because we already did a review of uh, Discovery Season 4 and Picard Season 2. But uh, we're, we'll summarize those briefly and then get into our reviews of Lower Decks, uh, Prodigy, and Strange New Worlds. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to think, well, the last time we were together to talk about Star Trek was probably in October. Okay. I, I, I don't, I don't remember if we actually even finished talking about Picard I season two or not. I don't think we did. I think we, oh, we might have, we might, that might've been the very last thing we did before we, we moved on. So I know we talked about discovery, so we don't really need to go too in depth. You know, we were very, very, you know, miffed by some of the things that happened in there. Interesting concepts, not necessarily best execution. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I, I, you know, said at the beginning of the of the series or season that it was i was like wait a minute is this just roddenberry's andromeda over again and it sort of was <laughs> sort of it's, was at least that was the con premise in concept yeah in concept it sort of was yeah but a sh a sh uh, you know a flagship taken out of time put into the future the federation's gone or the galactic empire's gone and they're going to try to rebuild from scratch like that's that that show has been done and it had it had Hercules in it. <laughs> I guess you could you could make an argument that that Discovery season four really wasn't that because the no. Federation really wasn't gone. No, in Discovery that's how season. that's how they set it up for the first two to three episodes. Yeah, that's fair. And, and then from there, you know, we get you know wacky out there uh, fan you know fan ideas for designs essentially of like ships with nacelles that aren't connected and wireless and nanobots and and it's like it, cool ideas. I, they just, yeah. to me, they didn't all fit together in the truck mold. I don't, I didn't have a problem with any of the technology, believe it or not. Um, no, no, no. The tech itself, it's just how it all blended with the stories they were telling. Oh yeah. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't link with the stories very well that they were trying to tell. And that, that was, that was true for season three and um, also for season four. It, yeah, it, it did not mesh well. A lot of really interesting technology. ideas. It's just, and I think a, a lot of that can come from, you know, you've got, the show at least moving into i think they're it's the fifth season i believe they announced is going to be the last one um i believe so they, that, they've, they've changed maybe. their minds a couple times on it uh but i remember that was advertised that they're making a season five and what i'm hoping is that they sit in a writer's room and go hey let's have a cohesive vision mm -hmm. I, I i felt like every, honestly all four seasons of the show have felt like multiple writers wanting to write different shows that they then have to shoehorn together yeah with, and with, the, been Macguff with, with the the uh kurtzman you know uh mcguffin storytelling that they've done with all their shows yeah the the, the mystery box but it's also them trying yeah. to reinvent the show each season because yeah. it, i i think for various reasons that that you know, the writers are changing, the producers are changing, but it's also that there's, you know, fan backlash about certain aspects 
of each you know, season's production and they're like trying gen- to generational fan backlash is in different ways like people that were yeah. fans of like the original original shows that don't like this and people that were fans of the tng era don't like this people are fans of even the movie era don't like this and then new fans that like certain things but then the next season they don't like what changed <laughs> yeah so you, you it's it's a they're they've been kind of stuck in a situation where they can't please any of their fans as as much as they would like to yeah, and I think there's a lot of unfair criticism about certain changes that they've made True. overall. Like, I think there you should always expect some change in the universe or progress. You know what I mean? Yes, but well, remember, we're, we're sci-fi fans. We fear change, <laughs> except <laughs> except we, we only like change when it's in the, the way that we would like it. <laughs> well, I think I heard I heard one person, one commentator basically say that Look, if some if some writer wants to make a change to canon, that's fine. They're the writers; they get to make that decision, right? That's their job. Oh yeah. Um, it's th- the only time that you, as a fan, can really criticize it is is if that change harms the universe. Yeah. Overall, if it doesn't really fit into the universe. Or if it doesn't work for the story that is trying to be told, so those are like the, the the valid criticisms. And I and there are people that have made those criticisms of the shows of of Discovery and and whatnot. Uh, each of the seasons, that. to me, each of the seasons in, held within their own bubble uh, have good concepts and can work. Yeah. You know what? You know what? This actually really reminds me of. It's almost like the Highlander franchise. Oh God! We well, we were just talking about the Highlander. Yeah, and that's exercise. that's what made me think about it. Like both both of us for different reasons actually like the second movie the best, which is a tangent for another time. <laughs> yes, because that that's that's a hot take that uh, a lot and, of people and, would sit there and argue about. Oh, I have I have almost lost friends over saying that. <laughs> oh yeah, so. no, I I have I have been yelled at about that, and yeah. I'll still stand by it. Like, like, and, and we will, we will listeners, we will talk about this. Mm-hmm. This, this will be a topic for a time that we can get into as to why there are, we, we have very different reasons, I think, for liking it the best. Uh, but it is similar in that way that it's almost like that's what is tr- like, not just Star Trek right now is as a, a whole with the different flavors, I'd say of the shows that you have, but mm-hmm. specifically with discovery, it's almost like each season is like a Highlander movie self uh, you know, it has the same characters. It has the same idea. The plots don't always mesh with the rest of the, of the universe that's been built, but in certain ways you can like certain seasons and certain aspects. So it's yes. And, and, and for its time, the Highlander franchise was that divisive. Mm-hmm. So I can, I see parallels. I've been, I've been in both the fandoms and it's, it can get ugly. Um, but I hope that, moving forward like that they have a cohesive vision for the fifth season uh mm-hmm. that and, and and it seems like every season the the writers literally they have taken their criticism to heart and have made alterations to things so yes it like it is a very the show is a very different show season four than it was season one that you can see that there's a, a dramatic jump in how things oh are, for sure for sure different. i think it's it's much more cohesive in season four than it is compared to season one yeah, I mean, so, I've never, I've never made it. I've never hidden the fact that I've, I've had you know harsh criticism for the show, but I think at its core, there, like you said, there are some fantastic concepts in there that I don't know. It, it, the show tends to shoot itself in its own foot while trying to explore them in a lot of ways, just because I think that in the in the serialized form that they have, they're not really given enough time to be able to explore some of these ideas because they have to deal with the overarching plot of the season. And, and it will be interesting to see moving forward uh, with this next season, because seasons one and two were uh, filmed before the pandemic seasons uh, three and four were filmed during the pandemic mm-hmm. with multiple different restrictions. Toronto had pretty harsh restrictions when they were filming. Uh, so, It'll be interesting to see what a post, you know, I'm saying in quotes, post COVID, even though people are still dealing with lots of things happening, but in a post lockdown, post restrictive COVID, uh, what they're able to do with that freedom for the next season. Yeah, it it will be interesting. 
Uh, and and just for summarizing what happened, you know, spoiler: she at the end of the season. Uh, it it was about like trying to rejoin, trying to get the Federation back to back on track. Right, basically, when they ended up finding the Federation, they had become scared and insular and and protectorate of the of themselves and not really having well, they didn't really have they weren't eschewing the values that they had in the past well see okay so that's like season three right season three is yeah. that the federation is still around it's just that some of the member worlds have quit yeah for really vague undefined reasons that i don't know to me don't make a whole lot of sense yeah. Um, for example, like Vulcan left the Federation because they felt they were at fault for the, um, uh, for the burn, you know, the, 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 yeah, how dilithium basically just blew up, but they also had all the sensor data that proved that they weren't at fault. So all they had to do was literally look at their own data and they would have understood that they weren't at fault and there was no real logical reason for them to leave the Federation earth left the Federation because, uh, they had lots of resources. They had lots of dilithium resources, but the colony on Saturn's moon Titan was also abandoned by earth, even though it's within like non warp shuttle range of earth, you can literally contact it with radio today. And they lost contact with it. And and by the way, Earth still had starships. Lots of them. So, you know, again, one of these I, I don't understand. Um, I, I don't know. So that's the big, but, but season four is more about like this giant um, mining device that goes. Was it the, the dark matter anomaly? Or something yeah. Like it, it, it's, I'm, I'm reaching back into my memory of what happened in the season because they, it, it it's yes, a, it's a, right. it's a large field that basically appears and tears apart star systems for a commonly found element, i.e. like the earth's crust is found, you know, this, this element, I forget, I, I had it written down and I actually, it's a real thing, by the way, you can look it up on Wikipedia. I just forget exactly what the, 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 uh, mineral is, but it's incredibly common across our solar system at the very least. And there's nothing that says it isn't common everywhere, but according to discovery season four, this thing is like, it's one of the most rare things of all time. And this species is basically made a huge mining device that, that rips apart planets and everything in its, in its field. And they don't seem to care that they're destroying planets and all that. Yeah. Okay. Well, they also exist outside the galaxy. And every time we shut it down, like we, we shut this thing down a couple times through plot device yep. and they just restart it back up. Like, well, that's weird. Why did our thing shut down? Well, it looks like there was an intelligent interference with it. Um, who cares? Right. But it turns out that they actually totally care about intelligent life. And once everyone learns how to communicate with feelings, literally feelings. They communicate with pheromones that produce emotions. Um, again, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because what's saying that an alien doesn't feel love towards seeing, uh, alien type things die. Uh, like well, also, maybe that's also, in their culture. Also just because the feelings that are universal to humans could mean entirely different things to other species, especially non-humanoid species. So like the, the feeling that, that we have, to. the feelings that we have for anticipation and love or lust could be the equivalent in another, another species for hate and murder. Yeah. And that's, but it turns out that every single assumption they make in communications with this species is totally true. And they get them to stop, stop mining please. And they do. And it, it just kind of happens. It, it's, it's a very kind of anticlimactic. Um, uh, you know what anime. I would have liked? I would have liked better. Mm. I would have liked if it had a, a sequest talking dolphin to communicate 
or, <laughs> or, or if they just use the whales. Like, I, I think the concept, like, okay, we're yeah. going to have to, we have this whole thing, like a rival that we're going to have to decipher an alien language. Um, that's a season. Oh yeah. Of like trying to explore each other's cultures to try to understand each other. One of the best episodes of TNG, you know, Darmok and Jalad at, at Tanagra, right? And like that ends up being a cool way to communicate. A very interesting way they, uh, to communicate. But it's, that's like a whole episode where the A plot is nothing but two people just trying to learn how to communicate. Yeah. And I, I would have liked, yeah. I would have liked if that was the, if this was a B. Okay. A show outside of Star Trek, but a show like Stargate SG-1, more so SG-1 than Atlantis, would have had the deciphering of this language and and eventual communication be a running B plot or even a C plot over the course of like 12 to 15 episodes. Sure. they they would, And then it would have led to a, the double part finale of the season. Uh, yes. And... And that, that is sort of the traditional way that, and I say traditional, like the 90s way of writing B and C plots. That's how they used to do it. Whereas here, it's a little, it, I didn't feel it was handled the way that a more seasoned team of writers would have done it had they planned it out way ahead of time. Yeah, like uh, season four of Discovery had a lot of really interesting ideas yeah. at its core. A lot of them. And, uh, you know, I praised it to, you know, Darlene when we were watching, like, this is a really cool idea. Are, are they going to follow through with it? No, that often didn't happen, uh, which is unfortunate. But I, I think the I think the core writing team of Discovery, there's some really smart people in there with some really great ideas. Yeah, I just think that a lot of those ideas end up getting tamped down for this, like, overarching season plot that you need to have action. You need to have this much action in, in this episode. And it, you know, Star Trek has action, have no doubt, yeah. but a lot of times the action kind of works against exploring these ideas. And I think it's just, I think it's a shame. That being said, I think season four of Discovery is the best season that they have done so far. Oh, by I, far. Yeah. that's the thing I, I agree too. Like for anybody out there, that's like, you know, has heard us in the early parts of last year talking, you know, it's like, oh, they're just another podcast complaining about episodes. It's like, no, this, if you listen to what we've been talking about for the last several years with this, this is the best season they've done so far. And they are hitting a stride that I hope in season five, you know, they take, you know, every little piece that maybe didn't quite fit and now they make it fit. Yeah. They take the lessons that they've, they've, they've gained, you know, that they've had for these years and go, wow, you know, okay, we can really write something really cool and explore a lot of these ideas that we've set up over the past four seasons that we just haven't had a chance to yet. Um, you know, I want to know about the AI computer of discovery. Um, that, that was a B plot in season four. It was, uh, for one episode, it was a B plot in one episode of season three, but it, it felt really rushed because there had to be action. And then we saw episodes. Well, there was the, I, which I think was personally my favorite of the short treks that they did. The one where oh, it was, yes. far, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. far, far in the future. And the, that's where we're and It's where we're introduced to the AI of the ship before that was even a concept in the show. Yes. We're introduced I, it, it, to the, the AI that, that, you know, the AI falls in love with somebody who discovers the ship after it's been derelict. And, for years the, the, mm -hmm. like the federation doesn't seem to even exist at least in this version yeah and i think that's not considered canon anymore like no they're not, they're not going, because of that or, yeah. you know and you could retcon that by just saying maybe not in that part of the galaxy yeah 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 um so, but, but that, like that was that was where it, the 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 ai is a ballroom dancing with with like it, it was actually really that was a really good short yeah it, it was I, I really enjoyed it. When I watched it, I was like, okay, I'm, I want to understand the story behind this. I want to see how, how the ship has just been left there. Why, and, you know, where like, did this AI come from? Can a ship be lonely? And then can it, can the ship truly develop feelings? And it did. Yeah. And so, I would argue that, that, that isn't something that's a 31st century 
type thing. That stuff has been around since Deutronic computers popped up in the 23rd century. That yeah. Computers are, are that in Star Trek computers are that complex. Uh, and and left, left there so long with the knowledge of, of an entire species within it and an entire culture. And it's, mm-hmm. it's left there. It can't move. It's kind of derelict. And at the same time, most movies and most shows would go the horror route of now it being jealous and not wanting you to leave and all this but no mm-hmm. it, it ends up caring enough that it's like you know you can't stay in my uh in my star trek adventures game that i actually play in our our ship had at well right now does not have but had a ai personality that developed because it was in contact with uh, a sentient data based species okay so yeah. They were already like an art of not, I don't want to say artificial, but they were a naturally developed intelligence that then like went transhuman quote unquote. So like an, an organic an organically grown intelligence. Yes. And the computer just kind of woke up and developed a personality. And, and you know how scary that like, if you really think about that, if you were to just wake up one day with the knowledge, not the knowledge, but like the thought of mind that we have now as, as fully formed adults, if you just woke up one day, like almost like amnesia, but you you are yourself, that would be scary. If, yeah, and, 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 we, and we explored it. We explored that like in in three or four separate episodes that we showed like the personality of this AI growing, but it was more of the AI became an extension of the ship, not be uh, not because oh look I'm I'm a part of the ship and 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 of course you know I come from the computer, but it's more of the computer, since the computer itself became self-aware, um, it had all the rules and strictures that were there for the computer. So the the AI personality couldn't take control of the ship because the computer isn't allowed to take control of the ship if there's crew there, right? Like oh, that's yeah, one of those yeah. safeguards. Yeah. Uh, the the AI personality could not change the course of the ship because the computer is not allowed to do that unless it's an emergency. You know, I'm not allowed to hurt any of the crew or do anything that would be against the crew's own self-interest. So her personality was like helpful and caring and I want to help. I want to understand. I want to enjoy this life and experience um, living through my crew because they are my family. Like it, it was a really interesting progression right now in our game the that that ai is gone uh, off exploring on on her own and is not in the ship but because she was the computer the computer isn't as efficient without her there because that chunk of her personality is gone so to speak it's oh, it's interesting okay. yeah that's so our, our, our ship is pioneer and her name was pi because haha mathematics and <laughs> a short for but she like is a a representation of a 19th century pioneer woman. That's how she kind of presents herself again, another play on the name, but she had a holographic presence, right? She would appear and, or, or just show up on screens and interact with the crew. Um, that is to me an interesting, like if you're going to give the computer a personality, the computer should be that personality should be a character. And that, Hands yeah. down. And that, you know, I hope that that's sort of what they explore again going into season five. Yeah, sorry for babbling about that, but I know, but that's, like but that's, season exa- four but that's basically exactly that's the kind of stories. If you're going to go with introducing stuff like this, go all in. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't give us one episode that then maybe forget about it for a whole year. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's going to be part of the ship, it's going to be part of the ship. And it's going to be part of, part of the DNA. Great. Yeah. I just double checked and it looks like show wrapped. It's, it's, uh, shooting in November. They're expecting it to be sometime early 2023. So I'm going to assume probably as soon as Picard is over they're they're going to announce that it's coming out for the spring and summer. Um, that makes sense. I actually am looking forward to it too, believe it or not. Cause I know their goal originally was to have a Trek show on all year. Yeah. Uh, to have it so that when literally like, a week or two, maybe a week before a show ends, they double up mm-hmm. and then it continues on. And they did a little bit of that, that this past year. So 
maybe we're going to see this and then we'll see like strange new worlds in the summer and something else in the fall. Oh yeah. Um, but that, that'll be cool. But yeah. So that's, you know, our summary slash discussion on, <laughs> on, uh, discovery season four, yes. uh, uh, Picard, you know, it's, it's the most recent, uh, is it the most recent one of the bunch? Let's double check. No, it was no, no, no. This prodigy, yeah, prodigy was more recent. That's yeah. pro- that's right. This one, that's right. This picked up a week or two after Discovery ended, and then when this was airing, I think we had a two week overlap, a week or two overlap with uh, Strange New Worlds. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Picard season two. I know we talked about the first half, maybe even part of the second half of this, uh, but this was this was you know the time travel borg season but it was in my mind it it was a little more like uh like like the it's a wonderful life let's let's show you what the world would be like if you hadn't ever existed sort of thing yeah it's it's going to be kind of tough for me to talk about this one (laughs) to be honest because um i i thought that there was some really neat ideas again a lot of neat ideas in it and the first couple episodes were really good oh yeah yeah really like good like really good to the point where we had discussions where we're watching it and we're sending messages to each other mm-hmm. and we're and we're like did they completely flip this around like is this is like you know we knew that because it was filmed during the pandemic there was going to be limitations on how many people they could get there we knew they were going to have to use more cg and it was going to have to be on a slightly lower budget So we did some hand wavy stuff to go, Hey, this looks a little cheap with some of the stuff at the very beginning of the first episode, like when they're at, uh, at Starfleet. Yeah. Uh, And that we're like, okay, pandemic, we can deal with this. Don't worry about this. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing stuff. They brought the, a couple of the characters were there that I didn't care for. (laughs) And I didn't think they needed to be there, but Hey, they were contractually obligated to be there and they were in Toronto and they couldn't leave. (laughs) Yeah. So let's film with them. Let's film with what we got. I even uh, liked, I liked his speech at Starfleet Academy. I thought yeah. there was some really, I mean, to tell you like how much I watched this uh, and, and take notes, like I took notes on all the different flags that were up behind Picard to try oh, to yeah. figure out. And I'm like, oh yeah, there, there, there's tell our primes flag. There's, but then there's, oh, there's a Klingon flag there. Oh, okay. I remember you, you like, there was a text message you sent saying there's a Klingon flag. And I was like, and like and you're like sorry i you probably it's probably not as important to you to see that there as it is to me <laughs> yeah because that mean? really implies that the klingons might be a part of the federation at that point yeah if their flag is flying there and and, and what's even more weird one of the weird flags there is that there is a non-standard romulan flag there yeah and we had this i remember that now we had discussions like is this a remus flag or is this it, it, this, I think it's like the Romulan uh, Republic. Yeah. And, and, and one and of those splinter, splinter uh, polities. And and then was like, I, I know our talk was, does it mean like, is this like their flag simply like, like a, a, a refugee flag? Be, like, is it representing their Republic? They don't have at home anymore, but it's representing all displaced Romulans. See, to me, with all the flags that were up there, because there's the United Earth, there's Vulcan, the Vulcan Confederacy, you know, things like that, that those are just the flags of the Federation members. Okay. It's kind of like having all the, like, the state's so, flags, the province's so is, flag. Is, right? is it, so, like, basically, that would mean it's the flag of whatever type of government formed after the fall of... Yeah, the, the of, Romulan of, worlds that joined the Federation. Yeah, after the fall of the Republic. Yeah, after the fall of the Empire. Empire, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, whatever. So I, was, I, yeah. I figured that there's like an Empire still out there, but it's also there was like probably a Romulan Republic, and then there were probably Romulan refugee worlds that did join the Federation. So it would be like that. But having that Klingon flag there too, you'd think, and, and again, it's not a flag they, of they, the They worked Klingon out there. They worked out the kinks that they were trying to work out, you know, uh, in in the, the last few seasons of, of TNG. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but again, it's it's not your standard Klingon Imperial flag. It actually has different colors. So I was like, is this 
and that's purposeful. They, they wouldn't just yeah. If they were being lazy, they would throw up whatever flag they found. Yeah, but which would no, be just they, your standard Klingon flag. But no, but, somebody yeah. took the time to design something that made sense. Yeah, and there was like lots of little stuff in the background of those first two episodes that were just meaty, meaty for a fan. And then like then Q snaps his fingers. And and it becomes a little it becomes a little sci-fi channel tropey for a bit. Uh, watching like it a, with watching it with Darlene, we kind of came to the conclusion that th- there was 10 episodes in that season, right? Yeah. Uh, there was, yes, correct. It was a three episode season. That one, you two, could, one, you could, one, two, you, and the final. Yeah. It could, it could have been made into a mini series or a mini movie. Yeah. If it yeah. was the length of like the V mini series in the early eighties, mm-hmm. like if, if this was a four hour movie, it would have been better than a 10 hour show. Yeah. Because the, everything up until the finale is a lot of meandering without and much of con in much of consequence at all. There was attempts to try to do like a, Hey, remember how fun it was when they did the, the, the fourth movie and they didn't quite fit in in the eighties. It was that yeah. sort of stuff for, and, and that, that can go two ways. Uh, it can either be fun, nostalgic, or it can be forced. And it felt a little forced. Uh, it, there was, I, I am much more of a fan of Trek when they are making references to real world events, but in more of a subtle way than, yeah. than spending multiple dedicated speeches to the camera or to each other, but they're really talking to the camera about, Hey, everybody ruined the world with the ozone layer. It it was, it felt like there was a lot of let's talk down to the audience that they, it felt like they didn't think they didn't think we were going to get it. Yes. And no, I agreed. I it's Star Trek works the best when they're not telling you directly yeah about something they're telling you allegories about something you know the the whole idea of assisted suicide do you have that episode in next gen that is you know uh, loxana troy falls in love with that guy that he's um you know the mash the mash actor who is who has reached 60 years old and when that species reaches 60 years old you're expected to um commit suicide basically and she thinks it's unfair and he's like, but this is our culture. And at, at one point he's wanting to get, you know, sanctuary on enterprise, but then he decides, no, this is my culture. I really need to, to, to do this. And it's a gut wrenching episode and they don't tell you what's right or what's wrong. Right. They're letting the characters explore on their own terms, what it means obviously Loxana Troy thinks this is like a barbaric practice, but that's her opinion. And the other side of the, you know, the other side of the argument is also presented. The crew is there just to support both of them in their, in their existence and in their opinions. Right. Yeah. And you're left to come to the conclusion whether Loxana was correct or, or our guest star and, and their culture was correct. Uh, and, and that's, that's why it's a brilliant episode. I actually, I, I cry all the time when I watch that episode. Um, just because it feels very, very real in, in a, in a way that's, that's great. But, uh, Picard season two generally doesn't do that. It, it basically says, Hey, look, yeah. Uh, 21st century earth, you suck. Um, you, and, you wrecked and, your and, planet. And by the way, everybody watching this for escapism, you should feel bad. Yeah. I didn't like that. That happened a couple times in the show. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it, there's it took, other it took things. Me, it took like, me out of what I was watching. Again, another great idea. You know, Rios gets captured by ice. It's not, it's not a stretch by any means to say that ice are kind of bad dudes. Right. Yeah. Um, and so they torture Rios. Uh, they, they torture him. They beat him down. They they're going to deport him. They throw him into a bus, and 
he gets rescued in a really silly way. But in the end, this, this traumatic event has no effect on his character at all. Yeah. <laughs> he loves the 21st century because they have real matches and cigars. Um, but if you're replicating a cigar, that's a real cigar down to the atom. You don't get atomic, you know, if you, you, you don't get errors, this is transporter technology. If you get atomic errors when you're replicating something, especially that you're consuming, that's how you get like prion disease. You know, you're going to get like weird molecules that are just going to give you cancer. That's not how replicators work, right? Replicators are there to replicate something down to the atom. You have real cigars and matches in the 24th slash 25th century. Why you're geeking out about a 21st century habit that's going to give you cancer without medical, you know, future medical stuff. I I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was a tangent, but that's like the next episode after he's rescued from ice. Rios is just, you know, celebrating the fact that he loves 21st century cigars. Well, and, and, and I mean, to compare, we've talked before and I know you have a weird thing where you don't like the Orville as much, or you like the Orville, but it bugs you because it makes it feel like it should be Trek, but it's not. Yeah. It makes me feel um, sad, but like, season two of or sorry season one of the orville has an episode called majority rule and as an example that it's it's the fantastic it's, episode and again that that felt like it's an episode where that it's the kind of style they would have done or we would have thought or would have liked to have seen on picard if you're going to do an episode uh that, that is instead of pushing it in your face directly saying hey you know this you know facebook and 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 popularity contests are bad uh, you know it shows you this world where it's gone to an extreme but in reality what they were really telling you is this is the system that is being implemented in china right now mm -hmm. with the social the social credit system in this form exists already mm -hmm. but they're not it, it, they're not pointing and saying hey this is china they're just showing you this and then you start realizing when they're using words that are similar and then if you think hey this is crazy what what you know what is a social credit system because they'll mention it here in the show and if you type it in you go oh that's actually what's happening in, in china right now it's just the only difference is they're not doing public executions yeah for being up for being unpopular at, but but literally you you're standing like your your social standing uh makes up the difference between being able to get food and not if you're if you're like, if you get too many demerit points within their system, especially since the pandemic started now, it's even mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. Like that sort of stuff happens. And I'm, and again, because the shows are so similar with, with how Trek, uh, you know, the, the nineties era Trek was and what the Orville is, you might be able to tell me this, but did one of the shows not have an episode where you're not supposed to do an operation uh, it, it's basically you, you can't operate on somebody and if you open them up it's considered their soul leaving and you have to kill them or something i don't think it at the very least not not next gen that i can <sighs> think of but i could be wrong then it might um, be the orville i'm trying to pull it but it basically two parents were there or something and they have their child it's an you know an alien species and they don't want the kid to get an operation and the doctor does the operation anyway secretly and when they the parents see the child they're mortified because you're not supposed to operate or cut into the body. And then they end up euthanizing their own child. Uh, and it's, and the idea was you shouldn't have interfered with their culture. You should have let the child die. That's the idea behind it or, or not, not that that's a good idea, but the moral quandary of it. Yeah. And uh, it's obviously, well, not obviously to everybody, but it's the idea behind it is it's similar to somebody like Jehovah's witness where you're not allowed to get, blood transfusions mm -hmm. or, or other religions where you're not allowed like the, where you just you can't do any invasive surgeries because it's against their beliefs and that's again it, it doesn't point and say it's this person but if you watch it you'll get that feeling that's the same thing i think that's i think it's the orville because otherwise it would have popped into my head and again there's another one i'm thinking is it, it might be the is it the orville 
it's either the, <laughs> again because it's been a while since some of these aired but it might be the orville or it might it wouldn't be strange new worlds or is it which, which show is the one where they where there's a kid that uses a battery oh that's Power strange Apple. new worlds Okay, so that that thing too. Okay, well anyway, we'll get to that later. See, these shows, some of the some of the shows start to blend together when they have certain concepts. But yes, um, I the way this ends, like I, the, with, I'm without, baffled. I'm baffled by it. That's the best way to describe it for me. Yeah, I I'm baffled. I, I truly like I, I I I did have to throw my hands up and go like I I initially. Were, gave up like I, I was like i give up that like i don't know what they can do like I, what is the show supposed to be anymore mm-hmm. because i've never seen such a fall off from a first two episodes to the, to a tenth uh, ever in yeah. any show yeah. ever in history like and it's not i'm not trying to crap on the show or anything it's just i was i'm watching with my hands up in the air going what the fuck the whole time um uh, like wesley back how how it, every interaction felt so disjointed and strange um yeah it felt out of order or it's there because I, they they want to have the scene not that they need to have a scene for it and i'm it, not that makes sense yes like, and, I, and i'm really not trying to crap on on the crew people work hard to making these shows yeah no but, i but mean I, the production value is but, is top notch but when i'm watching it when i watch this and go I have personally seen fan videos better than the plot of this episode. Like it, it like fan fiction is better. And Ooh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I don't, I, 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 ah, brain was broken and I was not sure. Like, I was like, I don't know if I want to see it. Like I'm done. I'm like, I don't know if we're going to review the next season when we found out they, a third season was coming and it was going to be the last. And then we saw the trailer and I went, Oh, don't tease me don't tease me and it's coming up like we're, we're recording this because this week as of when this is airing i think the next day is when the first episode is going to air of season three so yes. we'll see we will see I'm, what happens I'm actually looking forward to it believe me it or too. not i i really am because i've i have heard very good reviews and i have heard that this is the star trek that everyone has been wanting that this is you know yeah and there's going to always be some caveats because you know, there's going to be some recurring characters that we didn't want back but uh regardless i i feel bad saying it but everything i read from everybody involved in the production of season two says that the common denominator of what the problem was with season two's plot was wasn't the main writers (laughs) uh it was captain jean luc picard himself patrick stewart interfering with the plot yeah Yeah. that's Um, that's what i've heard too that it was a that this season was in particular was a vanity project for him to all of the concepts and ideas that he wanted and thought about for years that he wanted to do in a show he said i want all this done to my, for my character and they somehow had to comply and it, it, it's one of those cases where a fantastic actor does not make a fantastic writer mm-hmm. and you know it, what was baffling to me was his performances weren't that good either and i feel bad saying that he, you know, his he, best performance in the season was with John Delancey in like the yeah. final episode. Yes. Um, uh, you can see, and, and what, what I got from that was a genuine feeling from him that at his age, he might not get to work with him again for mm-hmm. real. Like, and they have yeah. good chemistry on and off screen. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, I feel like what he tapped into was, you know, I'm not saying goodbye because I might see in real life again. I'm, I'm, in fact, I probably will, but, remember when they were filming the stuff pandemic was happening all this stuff you know he his he's already like when they were filming this he was already 80 yeah he, you know there's there's only so many years left that a, a working actor can work in a leading role he feels himself slowing down he said that in interviews but he feels alive and has the energy to do stuff now so i could see him having that scene and and tapping in and going is this the last time we get to do this great so i felt like they all let this season be what it was going to be because of the pandemic i almost feel like if the pandemic wasn't happening there might have he might not have had as much control over some of the more peculiar plot points yes uh which again i'm all for experimentation go ahead it it just it, it just didn't work out personally 
from, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I think actually a lot of the people that worked on the show both in front and behind the camera all admitted that it was not what they were hoping it was going to be and mm-hmm. and the the way that the direction they were doing with this final third season was the, the marketing for it, reaction was hey we like i get the feeling that they were like we weren't impressed with what we did with season two so we're gonna you know what screw it we're gonna do the the you know the close out the banger of the show we're gonna get everybody together that we can get together all the crew that can get together uh will get together all the cast and if this is going to be the last time patrick stewart plays picard ever Mm -hmm. then we're going to do exactly what the fans have been asking for since 2002 Mm -hmm. and we're going to give the tng crew a last hurrah and i heard that there's going to be lots of crossover with ds9 Oh, yeah. are, are, are we? Oh man, who, are who we going to see the Cisco back? Do you think? Um, I, don't, I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think Avery Brooks would come back, but I hope to does, be surprised. Does, does he? Don't be a hokey prophet thing. Um, does he come and see him in a vision? Maybe that would be really cool too. Does that would be? And and is is or does he come back and he's like? Is are they going to have a confrontation? And is the confrontation going to be? I'm no longer angry. Mm-hmm. Like is 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 he going to be past his anger towards Picard? I don't. I don't think the Cisco is going to be back. I I, I don't think no. that. I, um, like I said, I hope to be surprised. I I, I, I if if I okay. If all we get is a crossover, and the crossover is just uh, Doctor Bashir and. And Garrick, and Garrick talking, I was gonna, and I was gonna like, say, like, like, like I want to see like, space husbands, and here. and yeah. and we know how how much more open Trek is to just openly LGBT stuff now. Yeah. So, are we gonna get a scene where maybe they're not married? Are they living together? Like, are they are they just you know are they living together? Or are they on a date? Or are they having lunch together in the background? Like, oh, if if they're they're not going to be in the background, it, I want to no, see no. Bashir and Garrick together. Like that would be that would be really cool. That would be really cool, and, and and you know, like there obviously there'll be an interaction with Worf over it. Uh, oh yeah, because yeah, like yeah. You, you don't you don't you don't have the DS nine people show up and then just not have a big scene or a bunch of jokes with Worf. So, That's right. You know, uh, do we now? Do we get? Do we get uh, O'Brien back? Uh, you know, Colin Meany, he's he is working. Like, is the idea, like, if they get him back, is it going to be that they need an expert on their ship? And, and they, because they're going rogue, are they going to get somebody that they trust to come back and work and, yeah. and work the transporter or, or work the engineering magic? Well, they got, they're going to have Jordy there. So, yeah, but is the idea maybe that Jordy needs help? <laughs> Jordy never needs help. <laughs> Jordy, never, Jordy, Jordy never needs help except with the transporter. So we need a transport engineer. <laughs> yeah, we need somebody. And he'd be, he'd be, he'd be okay. like, he'd be like, I was in charge of a whole space station, and they're like, yeah, but we 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 kind of want you on our ship. And he's like, damn it, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go into it. All right, we probably fine. should move on from Picard because <laughs> yes. we still have a lot of stuff to talk but, about. But, wow. But yes, yes. So that's that's that. We'll see what ha- we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, yeah. very very soon. <laughs> um. Lower decks. Uh, Lower decks. Mm. Loved it. Mwah. Loved it. Yes. Loved it. Best season so far. Uh, best. Best season of Trek. In oh years. well, you know that's Ooh, that's a it's, that's a close that's one. A, best animated yeah. season of Trek ever. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I love Lower decks, and this season was fantastic. Um, I said when first the first season came out that like Tendi is exactly what. I feel I would be in Starfleet just like <laughs> super, ecstatic to be there. Ex- you're, it's like, uh, you're, you're happy that it's time to wake up, to go to work. Exactly. Are, I love are, my job. And yet you're happy that you're going to bed. Not because you're, you're not sad that your work's over. You're happy that when you wake up, work will begin again. Exactly. <laughs> That's I, I like, I love Tendi. I love, um, oh God, see now, now that I'm on the spot, the doctor, doctor to, to, is it Talana? Dr. Cat lady. (laughs) Yeah. Doctor. I actually even have a pin for my hat. That is her. Um, and I can't believe I can't think of Tiana, Tiana, right? Uh, anyway, you see cast members, uh, God, why can't I think of it? It's terrible. uh, As Tiana. 
Tana. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Tana. Um, I another spirit animal. <laughs> just I, I absolutely adore her being like just filthy mouth and they bleeping her out because she's, you know she's, she's really, what if bones had the temperament of a cat yeah i just i love how how she also loves her job but is just constantly frazzled by everyone coming in and being sick all the time or horribly injured and, and because this is a cartoon and it's made for mature audiences you can get away with more jokes like like the the realization that that she has a romantic relationship with the uh, uh Shax. with shacks the the Bajoran, <laughs> and the, the Bajoran, and to the point where they, it grosses out the crew members. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, dude. They're oh. like, oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're trying to hide from them, but they but they get so grossed out they get caught. <laughs> I love Shacks too. Fighting fascism is a full time job. Yeah, do you think I had time for pottery while fighting in the resistance on Bajor? Yeah. Fighting fascism is a full time job. Where this show really got me uh oh, in season two it go i know we're talking about season two but in season two it's when they finally try they, they explain but don't explain how all the main uh bridge like crew members like how how is it that they always survive when you think that they're dead and mm-hmm. the answer is that they do die and they see some weird mes- metaphysical thing that they all end up seeing once you become a crew like a bridge member yeah and and they just don't talk about it they don't yeah. talk we don't talk did you did you see the black pyramid and they're like it starts crying we don't don't talk about it like, <laughs> what do you mean it's what was it beyond the something or other and then did you see the black pyramid did you talk to don't talk about it and it's like yeah. what there's some weird like 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 mesopotamian god that they <laughs> that they converse <laughs> with they have to pass through some horrifying trials to get back yeah. and then they, and when they come back they just don't talk about it and that explains their their all their neuroticies and how they're how, like especially on a crew where they're more likely to get injured than on like the enterprise it's like yeah the, the reason they're all strung out and crazy is because they've died so many times and been brought back from metaphysical weirdness that it's just they, they have like support groups that only they can talk to each other about <laughs> It means that there's somebody from the Q continuum, like just screwing just, with the ship mercilessly. Yeah. Did, did you see the Black Pyramid? <laughs> he starts crying. <laughs> 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 and when I saw that last season, I was like, okay, they're finally getting my kind of comedy, my kind of humor. And I don't want them to show that. I don't want them to, they can reference it again. I don't want to ever see what happens when they go. Yeah. I want that to be, that's the joke is that these crew members, they're not captains. They're not first officers they're not excellent they're never going to get or at least now they're not in the position where they're ever going to understand what these people are going through yeah yeah and in season three is just more of the 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 amazing fun of the show yeah it it, Um, it has all the references that you'd expect from a modern uh like hey remember this kind of show but without the forced in your face corniness of like a family guy doing it it's it's they work in neat little nuggets of star trek lore and you know they they don't put it it's not like right in your face they might do one joke like that and then you'll look in the background there'll be like 15 things that you can notice as as a big trek fan that you don't have to have seen uh to enjoy the episode but if you're a big fan you get even more out of it yes i absolutely love lower decks highly recommend it folks uh, and how did it, i forget how did it end because it, it was ends. with the um it, it this is like the one thing i thought was really silly in the in the series it was the texas class automated starships um, automated attack ships oh, do you remember yes, that yes that's like, right starfleet would never allow that to happen because haven't you seen star trek <laughs> crazy computers taking over starships is a recipe for getting your ass blown away Remember the the Multitronic that, computer from the original series that yes. resulted in almost the death of uh, what like four other starships. That's right. That's right. And then, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we don't need to go episode by episode, but just to know that if you're somebody that's been on the fence about the series, this is a, sh- a show where every season has gotten better. Oh yeah, yeah. And absolutely. that's not very. That's really rare in today's television where where a show actually picks up every episode and even i would say every episode in season three is better than any episode in season one and most of the episodes in season two yeah and don't think that like me criticizing those those automated starships is me saying don't watch this season no 
those even those episodes are fantastic. I and love so, them. And sometimes when there's a plot contrivance or something that we would go, that's dumb. They wouldn't do that to Star Trek. Somebody in the show will go, that's kind of dumb. Why are we doing this? Yeah, exactly. And they do and then, do that in that episode. They're they'll, like, they'll, they'll reference really it. Stupid. They'll be like, or they'll they went through. There'll be an episode where they go through something really arduous and hard. And they get to the end and somebody else did it really easy. Like, how'd you do that? They're like, well, why didn't you ask somebody from engineering to help you? Because they could have just got you through there. Yeah. And they're like, what? Oh man, why didn't we think of that? It's like, cause it, and you, as you're watching, you're like, why would they need to go do all that? It's like, oh, because not everybody is a genius, <laughs> but so some, sometimes they get worked up and then they get so worked up that they don't think logically. Yeah, Exactly. They're, you know, they're, they're, you know, ensigns. Okay. Fair enough. They don't have, you know, 30 years of experience. And they've been troublemakers. And I will say this for all the complaints that I made of Mariner in season one and partially in season two, nothing about Mariner's grading in season three. Yeah. She's great now. Yeah. And season four is coming. Like they've already announced it. Uh, I don't know if they have an exact release date for it yet. I'm guessing this is a summer or fall premiere. I, I am. I, my fingers are crossed sooner rather than later. I, I really like that show. Yeah. Really I, I like would, that show. I would be happy, you know, if, the, what does it say here? Uh, it's going to be 10 episodes. Yeah. That's all it says. There's really no other information yet. They haven't announced any of the other guest stars that are going to be on it just yet. Uh, but we'll see. So, uh, moving on from that, we got Prodigy, which is the one that we were trying to record a few different times to talk about, uh, because they split this show into two parts. Yeah. Um, so I believe, did we, we talked about the first half. We did. Okay. You, you, you and I did, I think. Okay. Uh, it's been a while see. then. It's been a while. It's still a good show. Uh, yes. I would say. Yes. Because I, the, I, the, the first half had a two part uh, two part cliffhanger uh, that ended February 3rd of 2022. And then okay. it took a break until October and the break was put in place and the video game came out in between there. Okay. Uh, I'll give a brief description of the video game without going too deep into it because I, I don't want to have to remember every little piece, but the video game uh, called supernova um, is you take control of uh Actually, I think you can swap between the two characters, but uh, you are uh, you play as uh, I guess doll, doll, yeah, doll, uh, and then Gwyn. You can swap between them, and they have different powers. It's almost a traditional like late '90s, early 2000s uh, puzzle action game. You go from area to area on the map, beating up enemies, uh, which are are all these robots that are being sent by uh, Gwyn's father. Mm. Uh, and you clear out an area, it unlocks a different area you can go to, you solve puzzles by uh, connecting different colored boxes that do different physics things to open up doors. So it actually kind of teaches kids basics of physics, and and, and it's almost like putting together a little electronics kit every time. So one thing, one little box can power a door, one little thing helps something else hover and shift around. Well, that's a good game then. Yeah, it's got it's got that loop there, and then you fight a boss and move on, and you, and each time each main level or each planet, there's a planet within the solar system. Each planet has a different member of your crew that's been uh, kidnapped or stranded, and you uh, beat you unlock them, you know, free them, beat the boss, and leave, and then you can go back to a previous planet, and with those extra characters that you've unlocked they will actually help you by opening up new pathways to secrets within the world. So there's a replayability to each of it. And in doing so, you actually will uncover bits and plots, uh, bits and pieces of the plot of uh, sort of a little background on why Gwen's father is so angry. And it sort of reveals a little bit more that something about Starfleet's first contact with their people went horribly wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's hinted that that s- some somebody from Starfleet, or maybe it wasn't Starfleet, but maybe they were masquerading as Starfleet. It's not really revealed there. Something about them brought up about a genocide of their people. Yeah, it was their own fault, though. They killed themselves. Yes, through, like 
the revelation that they weren't alone or anything like that. Some something like that. Yeah, yeah. and again, this this was this is planned to be an in between. It's in between season, parts one and two of the season. So stuff that happens in the second part that we're going to talk about it it expands on this further. You don't have to have played the game to understand the plot of, of the rest of the show uh, and vice versa, but it sort of fills in some background of, of the characters. Uh, and there's, I forget the name of the character, you know, the robot that's always seeking them out. That's like the underling of, of Gwyn's father. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Dreadnought, the game. Right? It's yeah. The game is mostly about him. Okay. He, he's coming after you. He's the main boss. And in, in there, I don't believe it's revealed in the show, but in the game, you realize that he's working on his own. He actually is planning to overthrow her father and kill everybody, basically. Okay. So there, and that has not been revealed on the show yet, but that is in the game. Like you see that, and the and on the show, they know that he's crazy, yada yada yada, but the amount of the betrayal isn't there yet. Okay. Uh, so, it, it, and the idea of it being supernova, you the point is you're trying to free the people of each of these planets of control of these robots that are planning to make their their sun supernova and kill everybody in the solar system and you have to reassemble your crew reassemble the ship go in fight the big evil boss and then you know you sort of have become the perfect candidate uh crew to join starfleet and it works as a standalone also works within the the game franchise or the movie or tv show franchise and it is worth playing. So it's one of those things. When it drops in price, dude, if it, if you can find it for like ten bucks, they have it physical uh, on Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, it, it'd be worth playing, and it's not hard. Like if you're not into action games or anything, it's one of those things that anybody can play it because it's made for families, and it's co-op. So a second player can pick up a controller and uh, play as the second character, and you solve puzzles together. So if you're playing single player. And there's a spot where it's like, stand here, and, a, and a, a box will drop from the ceiling. But if you move away, the box disappears. If you're playing one player, you'd move the one character there, then press a button, and it would switch to another character, and oh, you can control cool. them. But if you both are using controllers, you can do it at the same time. So uh, a prime example is there's a couple segments in the game where it deals with time travel or time phases. So uh, there's the planet's out of phase or out of time or whatever, and the one character gets transported into the future and one into the past. And solving puzzles in the, pa- in the past will change areas that you can get to in the future. So you're having to solve a puzzle in two different states of, of time. That's interesting. And it's actually, it, it's, I'm, I don't know if I'm explaining it the right way, but it's really fun. And it was, it was well worth it. I'm like, whoa, this is deeper than I was expecting for a kid's game. But again... I was not expecting the show to be as good as it was either for kids. <laughs> so yeah, no, it, th- this one of my one of my criticisms that I've had for for like modern Trek is that I can't watch it with kids um, yeah. because there's too much violence. There's uh, sometimes graphic violence, which is a, a real shock. Uh, uh, eye gouging. <laughs> yeah, that that was one of the most upsetting things I've seen in a long time. But. Um, you know, I can't watch it with kids now. I, and I, I can't even as much as I love lower decks. I can't watch that with a kid that, that you, can, can, you can watch lower decks with somebody who's like 16 or 17. Cause there's nothing sure. egregious in there. No, but nothing. It, egregious, but like but, you, you should be, I mean, ideally I get, I'm not going to tell you how to parent your kids, but it's intended for somebody like 14 or older. Somebody who's yeah, a, yeah. a little more mature, but prodigy, I would have no problems having, you know, a six year old watch it with me. Yeah. I think it's like rated TV. Y seven ages, seven up or something because, yeah. and the only reason being that there's going to be like, it's more than just a, Hey, look at the colors kind of toddler show. It's, it's a real kids show. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And see, I can watch, I can watch the original series or next gen with a kid. I, yeah. I you know, there's... A, kid, a kid might find them. They might be bored if they're not the right kind of kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but but there's nothing like objectionable in those. You know what I mean? And and Prodigy is that way. It's that this is, um, a, this is a show that's tailored for children. 
conspiracy yet, uh conspiracy begs to differ that the well, that you can watch everything with the kid. <laughs> yes yes you know sorry, normally sorry, the, there's always one there's always there's one, always an exception one torturous yeah. bug head explosion episode right so yeah there's always going to be something like that but um yeah with prodigy it's a kid show but adults can get something out of it i enjoyed yeah. it and, and, and like, i'm Jacob, in my 40s you know and jake and pog is like you know what I was I was thought oh I'm gonna get annoyed with how much he refer talks to I'm like you know what I'm like kids show it doesn't bother me kids kids show it would bother me some of the dialogue that they have but then I realized I'm like I'm watching a kids show but I'm enjoying it because ninety percent of this can be enjoyed by adults yeah uh, and uh, even the like the the rock character oh why am I drawing a blank on the name um, it's uh, Jacob Pog uh, rock uh, talk rock talk right uh is it or am i completely uh have, have i lost my mind i don't know wait a minute uh not murph <laughs> uh yeah rock yeah rock talk yeah 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 yeah. okay i was and, right and right. and this this is um one of the few cases where usually i don't like it when you when they cast kids to voice uh to voice characters that are actually kids because they can be kind of grading in shows uh, sure. For for anybody that I, and I don't watch it, but I've seen clips of like Paw Patrol, <laughs> uh, where it's like all the anthropomorphic dogs saving the day okay. in these kids shows, and they just get like five year olds to do all the voices, so everything is at a hundred percent volume, screaming the whole time. I don't like it when the kids shows do that. This is a different case. This is a case of uh, they cast I think a ten year old girl. Uh, Riley, uh, what's her name? Uh, Al- Alaz Rocky. And it fits because you can have one child actor voicing something and because the character is only supposed to be eight years old. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously that, that level of intelligence can be completely different and, and, uh, she's brilliant in this, um, you know, it's becoming an engineer, mm-hmm. but, uh, well, she's a science, science person. Yes. Yeah, science, science person. <laughs> you mean there's more than one type of science? yeah <laughs> like that here and that that and then that brings back again the, the wonderment of wanting to learn so much like this is a show that makes kids want to learn and it, it like and they're not being tricked into learning they it makes you want to you know explore and learn about things great so again great character there um there's uh the medusan oh. i didn't realize what that species was oh yeah from the, the original show. series yeah yeah uh a, a zero which again, and this show is about building a family, mm-hmm. building a family of of orphans and and prisoners and 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 whatnot. Um, I uh, see. I like Jinkum Pog, but then again, I I I love Tellerite stuff. I love the kind of like bitchy. I don't know argumentative. I, I think it's because I've seen there. Jason Manzukis uh, voice and be in so many things that I. I have a hard time not hearing just Jason Manzukas. Okay. Uh, but he is, he's actually pretty good in this as, as Jenga Bog. Uh, and then Jason Alexander plays the other Tellerite that, that pops up yeah. every now and then. And that, <laughs> that's funny too. Uh, and, you know, Kate Mulgrew as Janeway, the, you know, that was good. Oh, the casting we've talked about before is fantastic in this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, we, I mean, hey, we had even had guests, uh, they had like Ronnie Cox. I haven't seen Ronnie Cox in anything in, 20 years <laughs> yeah and, he did do, and and you know robert beltrain reprises his role as chakotay like like, like wow like for those of us that don't know who ronnie cox was he's uh uh jellico he, he, he's the guy that took over the the enterprise for a bit yeah was it two episodes yeah and and uh now he's a you know a starfleet animal, admiral and they and i mean i wasn't expecting him to be and he's got to be like 80 something now um yeah He's animated, folks, but yeah, it's his voice. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh no, of course. Yeah, like like yeah. again, that's a deep pull. Kids wouldn't know who this character is, but this, it's there for the this, adults that are this, fans this, of the this, show. This is the pull for the parents and grandparents that are watching with their kids. It's they're they're doing stuff to keep everybody interested. And as weird as this sounds, I, I've said it before. After watching this season, with a few little exceptions near the end, is this not? just a di- this is the direct continuation of the of tng this is like in my mind 
this is what's happened. What if we got season eight of Voyager? What if we, yeah. it's basically what, yeah. What would season eight of Voyager have been like? Yeah. This is season eight of Voyager or season nine of Voyager. Let's yeah, say. Season, yeah. Se- yeah. Some, yeah. Something, something like that, that would have happened between. Yeah. Like there's enough time that has gone between this, that it's like, what would have happened, you know, after Voyager, after, uh, you know, nemesis. And if they had had one more season of something. Yeah. Because there is a, a Voyager A that that we don't see in the last episode, but it's referenced because the shuttlecraft that come down to pick up the debris is, you know, NCC 74. Uh, it, it's 74. It, it's Voyager's Voyager's code dash A. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Why so, can't I think of Voy- it's it's late at night, folks? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And, and I don't again, have enough caffeine yeah. in me. Guest stars this season, you know, uh, some of it was archi- was was archival. You had Odo archival footage or ar- archival voices. Uh, the original, you know, yeah. Michelle Nichols, Duhan, uh, Nimoy. Um, who else uh, was there? Any Beverly Crusher uh, appears as a hologram. Yeah, Leonard Nimoy. You said that, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Trying to think if there's anybody else. Uh, no, I think Roddy Cox is probably the, the, the most surprising pull that they pulled in. Uh, and then, you know, each episode, uh, I would say if I had to pick a favorite episode of either part, it's the one where they're stuck with the, the, they're all stuck out of phase and time. Oh I yeah. Love, fantastic. I, I love any, any, any show that does it, that does it well. This mm-hmm. is the best I've ever seen it written for children. And one of the best ways I've ever seen it written for adults. Yeah, where they're all experiencing time at a different speed, and they have to solve a problem. It's they. Have, it was sort of like mixing all good things, only instead of one person jumping between time to try to figure out an anomaly happening back in time, it's they're all at a phase, and one one of them is having to try and navigate and help each other all out of phase, and we have somebody who at the point of when the episode started. Uh, was not was the least technically inclined to be able to do anything with uh, uh, Rock Tech, and mm-hmm. by the end of it, Rock Tech becomes like almost an expert on 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 um, whatever. What was the science they were putting together? It was something to do with the warp engine, or was it sure whatever subspace, it was subspace Sub- theory? Yeah, ends up becoming an expert on that, and you know that in itself, where how they were dealing with all of their they they are dealing with this big issue but each one of them is dealing with their own trauma and phobias during it as well yes and coming, and that made it great coming to term they're all they all have to face their flaws or perceived flaws or in some cases you know unfounded beliefs in the, uh, of of their body image or their or their mind and they had to overcome it and then at the very end to put a cherry on top I didn't think about it right away. The realization when they do the math that uh, Rock Tech was in there for like a couple of years. It was it, it was a long time, yeah. Like it was it was like longer, like to the point where Rock Tech was alone for so long, and Rock Tech was terrified of being alone. That was one of Rock Tech's things. Rock Tech was alone for so long. It's like how did they're like, oh my god, how did Rock Tech figure all this out? All all this crazy math, and they and then I was it. It was either zero or Janeway says, you know, they, they realized that she was in there for months, basically months, figured, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. by herself having to figure this out. And it's like, whoa, that's pretty deep for a kid's show. Like, and, and the realize their realization that like after it was all done, Rock Tech didn't complain about it. Rock Tech didn't cry, didn't even bring it up, was just happy to see everybody. Yeah. It was that, that, that positivity. We're not going to, we're not going to dwell on. No. the sadness or no. the neg- there, negative there were, thing it there happened. was sad there was sad stuff but i overcame it and i did better mm-hmm. and we're all we're all happy and together now so that was great and then moving on you know we had uh, a two-part finale that or two-part sorry uh mid-season finale that took that break for months and months and then uh we had a two-part uh closing for the season that was a bit of a personally it was the one plot line that was a bit of a letdown but I think it still was a good thing. It's just that it wasn't at the same peak level that 
it was for the rest of the, of the season. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to an, another season coming, hopefully sooner than later. Same Absolutely. Uh, you know, any Star Trek that makes me feel good and have like positive, positive feelings watching it, uh, you know, uh, it makes me think in different ways and explore like how I feel about something. That's, that's just a positive it's, thing. Go it's just, for it. Prodigy just me saying there. this. Yeah, me just saying this right. I'll say this right now, and I fully, wholeheartedly believe it. I think it's not just the best action cartoon. I think it's the best cartoon. Like, it's it would have been better than Saturday morning cartoons out there, like in probably a decade or more. Oh yeah, like, it's, it's, it's one. It's, it's one of the best cartoon. It's one of the best shows on TV. Let alone wow. you know, okay, and like sci-fi shows. Sure, sure, okay. So, uh, so yes. That's that. And then we're moving on, I guess, finally to the main course, which is, but again, we won't go too long on this because we, uh, we did talk about some of the, the episodes of this as they were airing initially, but we didn't talk about the second half of the season as, as we uh, were trying to wait for Mike to catch up and then he just didn't catch up. He has said he's going to before season two starts. And that is strange new worlds. Uh, strange new one. worlds. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, again, putting my stamp on it. Best live action tracks since 2002. Yes, I would. I I would agree with that. Um, overall, it is the best season of Trek that we've had since Enterprise went off the air. Oh, sorry, not since two thousand. Yes, since two thousand four. Yeah, because Enterprise season four way underrated. Fantastic season. Yeah, three I didn't care for, uh, and two uh, was you know all of the seasons of Enterprise are are above average for me. They're, I mean, yes, there's episodes that are bad. But I, I wasn't a big fan of the the, the Zindi arc. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Temporal Cold War, I was actually okay with. Uh, I know some friends didn't care for it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, when Manny Cotto took over season four, it was like, oh man, but it was a little too late. Yeah. Season four is just stunning. Um, but yeah, Strange New Worlds season one is arguably the best since Enterprise season four. Yeah. It's, it's the one that feels the most like, and because so much time has passed, there's been some updates. I'll say what I said to you off air in that I feel like some of the oddness of how unprofessional they behave on the bridge is like, they're trying to write it like you would write a movie, like the opening eight to 10 minutes or so of uh, first contact. That's the kind of banter, the jokiness, the, that you expect from uh, a movie that's trying to be a one-off elevated version of a show. Yes. Whereas this, it's not sustainable in the grounded real world in quotes, uh, extended seasons. I, I, you know, if it doesn't feel earned yet, if that makes any mm-hmm, sense, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if we had, if, if they wanted to behave like that and he's like punch it or making jokes or whatever, if you wanted to do that at the end of every episode and the last lines, like they did on the original show. Okay. I, I give them, I could go, okay, if you're going to do that, just as like, have, have one quippy line at the end of the thing as a bit of an homage to the sixties show. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you wanted to do that, but again, let's say the show got two or three, four seasons, and then we're going to do a theatrical movie, do it in the theatrical movie. And then mm-hmm. you've earned it from the audience, mm-hmm. uh, which is that, that's really that some of the, the goopy whoopy science is, is my only other complaint, but it's, head and shoulders above the rest like it's if unless you're sitting there scrutinizing it there's very few things that pop out as wrong to me if that makes any sense i I would i would say well because i'm like the star trek kind of lore person and tech person obviously the science is going to bother me more but i don't hold that generally against uh the episodes when i'm like writing down notes i'll just go okay yeah that's you know they have a science advisor on the show too which i i have to think that they just don't listen to her but and and it it can happen that way too when you're trying to like especially when they're trying to make they were trying to make make a television show and make compromises again during the pandemic i I know i keep saying that as an excuse but that is a valid excuse for when it is it is is. like the last three years have been production hell for every show let alone shows that require this much special effects shots So like there's in every one of the episodes that are in season one, I I would, if there was something there that really 
just did not fit that that pinged me for the plot like that just does not make sense or or this does not follow from this without just making huge assumptions you know what i'm saying there yes. would be always something else in that episode that made me like grin or clap my hands like going okay you guys nailed that you <laughs> like nailed that I remember you saying when we were watching some of these, there were some that you liked more than others when we were watching initially, yeah. but I remember you say, saying to me, are they in my head? Like who's, who's reading my mind? Somebody's messing with me. They're purposely doing things to mess with me to make me mad. Only 15 minutes later to go, ha ha tricked you. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, there's, there's tricked you. We, we fixed it. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, and then that it makes sense, and I have to like sit there and scratch out my yeah. like criticism. Like, okay, nope, they explained it, but I was being fair about it by saying, yes. okay, yeah, no, they explained it. It makes sense now. Cross, cross, cross. But like the the one thing that bugged me in in season one is um, uh, Una number one, yeah, being being arrested for being an Illyrian makes no it that does not follow to me because they say, well, it's there's a ban on genetic engineering in the Federation. Well, there is, but that's for Federation member species to not genetically engineer themselves. Illyrians aren't Federation no, member species. Was, I was under the impression, at least how I interpreted it, was she was arrested for not just falsifying documents, but essentially identity fraud by not divulging things. That had she, yeah, had had she actually explained who she was it would have been a lot harder to get and she says i could have never got in no that's not the case this this is this is starfleet they would have looked at a case-by-case basis if the argument is if you're genetically altered as a child you don't have a choice in the matter are you being punished because of that no that's that's what the impression was that they gave that it's illegal to be illyrian in the federation yeah which which, and i was like uh, no that's not how this works it's a it's illegal to be an adult, make a conscious choice to alter your DNA. While you're a member of the Federation. Yes. But remember, the Galerians aren't even members of the Federation. Yeah. And like, we've seen, and, and like you could, and like we've, there's been cases where people have been in Starfleet that aren't members, right? So. Yes. And, and she could have been arrested for falsifying her information by saying that she's human. That's that's fair, but again, that seems really excessive, and that's not what they say in the episode. No, I know, like that, a- that's that. I felt like that. What to me, if that's how they resolve this, mm-hmm. and as long as in season two, it's not a rescue mission to get her out of prison at some point. Mm-hmm. As if it ends up being that she comes back of diplomatic reasons, it's like, oh, you were we basically she was arrested and held because. I could what I could see is them going, "Hey, she's uh she lied on her documents. We we are going to hold her because we want to find out if she's, you know, a spy mm-hmm. or is is there espionage okay. involved?" Yeah. Okay. And and they'll be like, "Sorry for the heavy hand." Or even if it's literally like, "What if in the next the first episode back, it could literally be resolved and I'm not saying it's, it's a waving of the hand, but they could do a thing where she shows up and they're like, you know, permission to come aboard and they're, and they're like how'd you get out and they're like and they get a message from one of the admirals they said sorry for the heavy handedness but we had to make a show of force because we believe that there are spies mm-hmm. and if that's the case great go, they want to go like a little you know cold war scare okay go ahead do that yeah uh, excellent then i cross off my criticism you know exactly. from, from the brief that that makes sense then. and and, and i i, I kind of get the feeling that I, i'm hoping that's the way they go that i hope so too that getting her out like he like they could even do a thing where he is debating, do I do something rash that's going to get me in trouble? Plans to go do it is, is because, and maybe is a little wishy-washy on whether or not he's going to, and then gets the call saying, you know, you, you have to come down to uh, Starfleet command, blah, 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 blah. And then she's just there in a room and they're like, and they're like, you know, they explain the whole situation. Maybe it's even a case of that they were, are going to recruit her to do it espionage herself or something like there are a lot of ways you could get out of this that and they seem the writers of this team seem to be smart enough to do that sort of thing not to say that other writers aren't it's just from what we've seen like you said they they tend to correct things that may that you may think are wrong as they go along <laughs> yeah um what did you think about hammer <sighs> 
really, really, really well, underutilized. Yeah, really, really underutilized. Really, uh, I, why did you include this character when you? He should have been in at least two more episodes, minimum. Yeah, as as a major character, uh, because the like we were upset when he was gone, but the impact would have been a lot more of a gut punch had we had a little more time with him. Yeah, because I did not. I was not upset when he died because the character died. I think it was. I wrong was upset. To have, like I think it was wrong what, to have that episode when when that episode aired in the order it aired in. Even even then, like if they should, put it in like episode nine, it still would have been just as kind of pointless because uh, they didn't use the character. Okay, yeah. We what we needed was maybe two. We needed two more episodes where he was fairly prominent, and then mm-hmm. at least one or two more in season two, and then. If you wanted to have that happen to him like a third of the way in season two, yeah. that would have given us the Game of Thrones vibe of, oh my God, anything can happen. Yeah, this just kind of felt like, uh, okay. Uh, and well, what's sad is the episodes where he was used were, were great. And, yeah. and, and, and like, it's funny, you wouldn't think that I, because I would, I'm usually the guy that's like, I don't want my Star Trek to be really silly. I liked the episode where everything was like magical uh, uh, fairy tale. <laughs> bs because i thought it was because, okay because he was good in it. yeah he was because he was, and, and but... what he was the grounding factor all all of like pike going over the top hamming it up almost like a like a sam raimi show like it felt like a xena show or something you know what i mean like yeah them hamming it all up and then him being none too impressed and it's like why doesn't it work and he's like because i'm blind it doesn't work on me <laughs> it doesn't work on my species yeah. because we have we have telepathic powers yeah, because he's an anar, which yeah, is like so, a subspecies of the Andorians. Yeah, yeah, so 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 he had like he had telepathic powers that basically blocked him from have, working on him, and because his visual cortex doesn't work, or you know, he wasn't able to be fooled by an illusion in front of him either. Yeah, and the whole time he's just like, "What the hell is going on? Why is everybody acting like? Why is everybody now stupid? Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. or, or more stupid than they usually are." And could we stop this this foolery? And like, can we just stop this, please? <laughs> Do you have like a uh, a surprising character that you didn't think you would like, but you did? Um, if not, that's fine. You, you, you I'm know just what? wondering, Doctor Doctor Mbenga. I knew I would like Doctor Mbenga. I, I didn't. Thing. I didn't know I would like him that much. I really like him. See, I, I remembered him as a kid watching the original series that here, you know, okay, here's a character that just pops up a couple times. It's Dr. Mbenga. He's like the Vulcan specialist uh, when, when he was there in the original series. Um, but he's fantastic in this. Babs, um, I'm not, I, I apologize. I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last oh, name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 or something. Yes. Unfortunately it's, a, it's I apologize. Yeah. He's a great actor. Great actor. Um, but I would say honest to God, every time Adrian Holmes as Robert April was on the screen, I was really interested. Um, Robert April is the Admiral that's in this but he is actually the original captain of enterprise when it was first launched. So like he took it out, he took it out on a couple five year missions and then gave it over to Pike afterwards. And Pike's like the second captain. Um, When Robert April was in command, his wife was actually the chief medical officer on enterprise. See enterprise isn't a brand new ship. When the original series comes around, enterprise was launched back in like 2243. So like, 25 years before the original series started and like see i thought you were going to say like 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 kirk was going to be your your surprise or or no uh, (laughs) no i thought that was kind of i didn't i i'll be honest i did not like the last episode even though most people did uh when i watched it i was like well um i just kind of want to uh watch the original balance of terror now like, yeah. I don't want to see this. I want to see a new episode. I don't want to see a rehash of Balance of Terror. And and um, you know what? I, I, I would say the weakest character to, for me was Lon, but she got better yeah. as it went on. That's, I think, okay, that's interesting. Which I, I, I just, I didn't want any Noonien Singh. I didn't want any of this. I was like, no, yeah. mm-hmm. stop. That's fair. 
please don't. I felt that she was overacting a little bit uh, with her emotions in the first couple uh, episodes she was in. And then I felt she got into her character better. And again, another one where in the, the medieval times episode, I saw her range and I went, yeah, the actress oh, is range. she's yeah. a lot. So it's, I was like, okay, it's not that she's not a great actress. It was maybe that she just wasn't as into in tuned or maybe the director didn't pull what they needed to pull out of her in those first couple episodes with her. And mm-hmm. then I felt she got a lot better with it. So yes, I, I'd say I was pleasantly surprised with her. Um, all the plot lines here for the most part were great. Like Dr. Mega with his daughter, I, I, I thought they were going to stretch that out way longer and make that way, way too long. And then it mm. turns out that they, they found a way to make it work and make it emotional and make it interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not, not, not the way I would have necessarily done it, but they wrapped it up in a bow and went, okay, we don't have to worry about stringing this along too long before it becomes boring. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular that popped out. Uh, I, Spock's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually think that, that all the actors and actresses in this do a fine, at least a fine job with the role that they're given. Um, and sometimes it, it really elevates into something way more like Anson Mount is just, you know, chef's kiss. Oh, oh yeah. Like fantastic. Even, even when he's hamming it up and being silly, I, where I might get mad and other things, yeah. I'm like, you know what? He's doing great because he'll, I, what I realize is when he's acting silly and being, you know, I'm like, why is he, people are like, oh, why is he just being Kirk? You know, it's like, no, nah. no, he's not. No, yeah. He's not. He's being himself. And if you're seeing that in Kirk, you think maybe it's that Kirk is emulating him a little bit or that's where he got some of it from. <laughs> Uh, can, I, or, can I also say I love Jess, Jess Bush as Christine Chapel? Yes. I, for whatever reason, I thought that, that that she would probably before the season began. I was like, oh god, they're this is they're going to ruin the character. Even though there's not a lot to the character in the original series, to be fair, but what what they uh, what Jess did in this show really made me smile with Chapel. I don't know. I I, I saw yeah. the, the it, beginnings it, of the chapter works. that we see later. It, it was a way, the way that she's written, the way she's acted, the way she's cast and everything, it's a way of making it believable that it's like, hey, a bit of the classic style, and then yep. here's how modern shows are made, and they made it work without it being cringy or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, funny when it needs to be funny. Uh, Anson Mount, like you said, what with his performance, where when he's acting silly, the more you watch it, the more you realize he's what he's doing is he's covering up like he's he's sometimes putting on airs of of being silly and over the top when the reality is he's hiding the fact that he is tormented this whole season yeah he is because he knows what's going to happen to him and and this so it's like i'm like if if you take some clips out of context you're like why is he hamming it up he's not hamming it up he's doing in character a poor job of hiding his real true emotions to the point where they start calling him out on it. Mm-hmm. And can I and, say still that the, the, the first scene in, 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 uh, in the first episode is, you know, well, not the first scene, but like the first series of scenes is him, like really trying to cover up his own yeah. feelings, you know, by, by, by staying away from Starfleet, he's afraid of his future, but it also has that great scene of him watching uh day. The earth stood still. Yeah, and God, that still brings a smile to my face. He's watching it, and, and it, when he's asked why, he's like, "Because it's a, a classic. It's important. <laughs> it's important, and it's because it is important, especially the scene that he's watching, because it's all about, you know, it's all about humanity's place, its, it's first cr- contact. Like you, you need to be, you need to understand yourselves and not destroy yourselves. Be a- like it's clear that the they took any criticisms people had and they were saying remember the marketing for this was this is the trek for the people that have been complaining about trek and yeah it's not going to be the perfect show for everybody but this was this was like okay this is the show where it proved that when they were launching this whole new trek stuff they said with trek online we want to have all these different shows and each show can have a different flavor is what they were marketing it as this showed that it can because the other shows still sort of felt like they were the same Mm-hmm. And this one 
this feels like a completely different show. Yeah, and, and uh, the entire time we've been talking about it, I have a smile on my face. Like oh, yeah. it, it, this, this show is a good one. This one's one of the good ones, folks. And you know, I'm super stoked for whatever they do next season, for sure. Which is again, uh, I don't know when is this one premiering. They don't have a date yet. It's, I'm thinking we're going to get an announcement that you know it's it's probably summertime. Mm-hmm. Um. I would be happy if they just, you know, give it to me now. Please give me, if they said, hey, instead of having, uh, you know, uh, however many 10 episode order or whatever they've been getting a lot of these shows, if they said, hey, we're getting 26, I'd be like, we're going back to the syndicated runs. Okay, sure. If you've got enough writers and you've got the time to make it, it's just that these shows cost so much because they're so heavily with special effects. And that's another thing. The special effects, for the most part on this, I don't think I've seen on, on a TV show before on a TV show's budget. Pretty darn good, right? Exactly. So uh, the only thing that we know so far is that they've uh, they've announced that there's been six episodes that were finished production. I don't know how many more they have to do. It's going to be 10 episodes total. Uh, mm-hmm. Jonathan Frakes is going to be directing some episodes of the season. And Carol, apparent- Kane, Carol Kane's going to be in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and there's going to be a crossover two-parter with uh with lower decks so Mm -hmm. how that's going to work into it you know i don't think they're doing a roger rabbit cartoon (laughs) with real people thing it's probably going to be all the characters from well actually wait how would that be would it be the cerritos shows up in the in the past probably or did they show or did they show up in the future i would think that it's going to be some weird time travel thing from the future and it's going to be like because it, it would make a lot more sense if the Cerrito screws up and ends up in the past yeah. than it would be for them to show up in the future. Because if they show up in the future, there's a lot more that they would have to do with the look of it to try to make it match what's currently happening in Trek, like in that time period. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting. But because I think Lower it, Decks is very faithful to what Next Gen... Yeah, uh, I think it's a lot easier for them well. to go back in time... Yeah, I think it's a lot easier for them to go back in time where they only have to animate one ship mm-hmm. from the future. And something that Cerritos does screws up completely. And I guess that comedy from, like, are they going to go as comedic with it? I would, maybe it's going to be the comedy episode. Is, or, or, oh, okay. My closing thoughts on this, other than to say that I, I freaking love this season, and it's also going to be this, the first show that they've ever done in Star Trek that's going to get a 4K Blu-ray release. I want to see that, the quality yeah. from there in the future. But I just had a uh, brain, brain fart, brainstorm, whatever you want to call it. What if it's what if the crossover episode is a single episode, and it's the Cerritos gets into the past, and they do like the Deep Space Nine Tribbles episode, and uh. it's and it's them from the future, like we as the audience notice that they're there and they're trying to stop something from happening. So like the the crew of the enterprise doesn't know what's going on. They're not even aware that the people from the future are there trying to do something. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. But we, yeah, we see, we see Boimler back there with his like purple hair, yeah. like just <laughs> bitching with Mariner. And, and that would and, be fantastic. Yeah. And, and well, and they're the whole time. They're just like, they're like, don't show your, don't show your implant. Don't show your, your, your optical implants. Don't show like, and, and, or even in the sense, like they go back in time to their, <laughs> And it could be a, a case of like the crew's walking around. They're all staring. They're like, why are they all staring at us? And they're like, they're all staring at, at Tindy. It's like, because she's an Orion in one of their uniforms. Yeah. Oh yeah. That and, wouldn't be good. Right? You know what I mean? And they're all, they're all staring. They're like, they're like, they, they're like, we got, we got error appropriate uh, uniforms. And, and they're like, but why are they all staring at us? It's like, because there's somebody with an optical implant that looks like a, a robot. And, and then there's an Orion walking around with like command uniform. And they're just yeah, like, they'd have to they'd have to hide the optical implant <laughs> and likely like spray paint <laughs> spray paint Tendi, which would be terrible. But but like that, that's the kind of like they probably wouldn't. There'd be a joke if they why are, why are we why do we have to hide because you because everybody's staring at you. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So they could do who knows what they're gonna do. But I would just love put on they, a hairband and hide my ears. That'll be okay. Yeah. Oh, and if if they do that, it's got to be like. <laughs> The headband that that Spock wears in, in 
uh, voyage home. <laughs> and then, then it's totally cool. Then it's totally cool. No one ever notices that she's an Orion. She just, it's, yeah. it's, it's totally like the Jackie Daytona episode from yeah. what we do in the shadows. <laughs> exactly. it's just, she it's Tendi. She's an Orion, but if, as long yes. as she's wearing that headband, you can't tell that she's an Orion. No one notices <laughs> Jackie Daytona human bartender, <laughs> totally normal human bartender. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I know we're, we're rambling a bit, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, we, we could have done a uh, episode by episode synopsis and review, but we, because for the most part, they were really good. Yeah. It, I would almost suggest just going and watching it rather than having us spoil anything for you. Yeah. Go and, for it. Watch and it. then, you know, we'll, we'll do, we're probably going to return, not necessarily to episode by episode reviews, but we will probably return to doing, you know, chunks, maybe half season reviews as the shows air. I, I've been talking to Michael. I think we'll probably convene to do a quick episode, like a half hour one or something uh after picard season three's first episode airs just to see to test the waters because this is the one that we're most you know anticipating like what's it gonna be like you're, yeah. you keep telling us it's the whole crew coming back for one last ride what's the tone gonna be what's the feel gonna be that's something that you know even episode by episode we might you know or in chunks of episodes want to talk about i think we're probably going to want to convene and talk about the first episode for sure yeah i think that's probably a good idea so yeah, we've been going for quite some time now, but that is the whole Trek year in review from us. Uh, everything uh, television or movie or, or streaming related, uh, you know, it, there was tons of stuff that happened obviously in, in books and RPGs and everything. That's a topic for other times, right? So yeah, uh, it's Trek, I guess Trek on screen year in review 2022 extravaganza now closed looking forward to 2023. Uh, we'll be back probably in a week or two to talk about the first episode or two of Picard season three. Uh, any closing thoughts there, Aaron? Uh, yeah, it's, it's ups and downs for 2022 in, in Star Trek for me, but I, I have a lot of hope for the future and there's some really good stuff that was in 2022. And that is a, uh, you know, I think, I, I'm, I think yeah. the, sh- the second half of the year ended on a much more positive note with the shows that were airing for us, you know, for sure. giving, a, giving us the positive momentum going. I don't think, I think, uh, Old Trek fans, new Trek fans, whatever you want to call them, for the most part, were pretty universally liked uh, Strange New Worlds. Pretty much at this point, universally liked uh, Prodigy and uh, uh, Lower Decks. So, you know, we're on a roll. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are, for sure. So, uh, so that's, yeah, that's no, going to do that's it, it, I guess. For me, yeah. Yeah, that's it for you. That's it for me. Uh, we'll be back in a week or so. Uh, I guess we'll have to just close the show now and if you uh, like it, you know, like, subscribe to uh, the podcast, feedback for us, feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Uh, we'll get on Birdman so they can catch up. Uh, but he should be, he said he's going to watch uh, Picard, so we'll, we should be convening very soon. And uh, it's glad I'm glad we're back to doing more Future Imperfects. And I know we've got ideas to do episodes that are not just Star Trek related in the future, but, you know, this was the one we promised that we were going to get out <laughs> at some about, point yeah, yeah, about a month and a half later than, than initially planned, but it was all compressed into one. So thanks for staying, you know, sticking around and listening to, with us for about, you know, the last couple hours or so. So we'll <laughs> yeah. be back. We'll be back. Bye-bye everybody. Computer. This is captain James Kirk of the USS enterprise. The struck sequence one code one, one a computer. Initiate the self-destruct sequence. Authorization Janeway Pi 110. Computer, this is Captain Benjamin Sisko. Initiate auto-destruct sequence. Authorization Sisko Alpha 1 Alpha. In auto-destruct sequence, authorization Picard 47 Alpha Tango. Self-destruct in 15 minutes. There will be no further audio warning. My lord, the ship appears to be deserted. How can that be? They're hiding. Yes, sir. But the bridge seems to be run by computer. It is the only thing speaking. Speaking? Let me hear. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Get out! Three, Get out of there! Get out! One. At no point 
in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Thanks for listening to this episode of This Week in Geek. Hungry for more? Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net. You can subscribe to the podcast, browse our Twitter and Instagram, and leave your thoughts on today's topics. If you'd like to give us some feedback, send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Tune in next time, and remember, lower your shields and surrender your listenership. We would be honored if you would join us. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.